Welcome back. Time to add in our red blood cells. Now they're going to do just pretty much what the viruses are doing at this point. So let's go back into our ECS manager and we basically just need to follow through the same thing that we did to add in our viruses. So if you want a different number of red blood cells, then you can put an int up here for them. So int num blood and let's make that 500 as well. Now we also need to pass through our prefab. So public game object and let's make that red blood prefab. Okay, so let's go and make an entity. So we've got our virus entity here. We can just copy that line and put in here instead uh, red blood, which we will make from our red blood prefab. And then we can just copy this for loop and do the same thing again. So let's copy it and put it down in here. Put num blood, is that what I called it? Yep, num blood. And we're instantiating our red blood instead at random locations in that range, that's fine. Setting the position, that's also fine. And setting the speed. Now, this is not also fine. Why is it not fine? Because there is no float data component sitting on our red blood cells. So let's fix that. Save this as it is. Let's go back into Unity and now click on your red blood cell down here. Once this finishes thinking about compiling my code and to the prefab, we're going to add in our float data, which is fine. Okay. So we've got float data component on our red blood cell and we also have it on our virus and guess what because float data is on the red blood cell then our float system code is going to just pick it up automatically and move it around so something else i didn't actually explain in the previous lecture because i was trying to jam so much information in there is that you might have noticed this system code doesn't actually go and live on anything in the hierarchy, which is a little counterintuitive to what you might be used to having used traditional Unity. And it takes a little getting used to that because uh, when you first have a look at any of the demonstration programs that Unity puts out, you'll have a look at the hierarchy and there won't be anything in there. And then you're wondering how on earth is this stuff just moving around and doing things? So you need to go digging through the code and look for anything that is a job component system or a system as such, because they're the things that are actually driving everything in the background. Okay, so enough talking, let's press play. And we will now have our red blood cells being instantiated if we actually remember to put them into our ACS manager. So just select that, drag and drop your red blood cell over here as your prefab so that it can create your entity. Okay, now when we press play, we will get them. So now you should have a very nice looking a little simulation with the red blood cells moving around and the viruses. So they're moving around using the move script, but they're also colliding with each other. So the physics system will be in there as well, moving them and giving you this uh, really great and fun little environment, which of course you can move the camera around in because you've got drive controls on it. Okay, great. So now, Good time to move on and let's start adding in the shooting of our droplets. So we're going to make a very simple sort of gun setup system for a first person shooter. Right, so we're going to start off with the same kind of idea that we've done for our virus in our red blood cells. We're going to bring through our prefab for our droplets. So this will be Let's call this our 
bullet <laughs> prefab, even though it's going to be our hand sanitizer droplets. Uh, so that's our bullet. Then we need to, of course, make an entity from it down here. So I'll just copy this, put it down there and make this into an entity, which will just be called bullet made from our bullet prefab. Now, when you uh, press the mouse button is when we actually want to shoot these out. So you might want to also set up an in for how many of them that you create. Now, in this case, I'm just going to create 10. You don't need a lot and that will do. So there's 10 of them. We created our bullet here. Now, we're not going to instantiate them at the start. We actually want to instantiate them when we press the mouse button. So we come down into the update and we put code in here that you should be familiar with. So if input dot get mouse button down and we want to have the left mouse button, then inside of here we will actually do our instantiation. So notice how in here I'm actually mixing up mono behavior code and ECS code. So this is very much a hybrid way of doing things, which really makes a lot more sense to me and also to people coming from the traditional way of using Unity because you get to sort of mix them together. If you jump straight into the ECS and want to do sort of pure ECS coding, it is really difficult to get your head around what's going on with the entity and the components and the system code. So this is a great way to do it. And also, if you're a visual learner and you're very used to the sort of the visual nature of Unity, then this is just, I think, personally, the better way to go. OK, so let's put in here a for loop for int i equals zero. I is less than num bullets. I plus plus. And then we can do our instantiation. Okay, now num bullets, didn't I call that num bullets up here? Oh, num bullet. Let's make it num bullets since it's plural. I didn't do that with the others. Yes, everyone always complains about my inconsistent coding. Anyway, hopefully you get it. So var instance equals manager dot instantiate our bullet. Right now we need to create a starting position for these bullets and we currently don't have one. It's going to be from our camera. So we need to pass through our player, which we will do up the top here. So public game object player and I can just pass the camera through into there or if you're using a first person player character that you can walk around, you could use that or if you actually had a third person guy with a gun and that you could pass that position through so that you know where to start these spawn point for these bullets from so uh, start pause equals player dot transform dot position and then I'm just going to add a little bit of a random value because you're creating 10 of them and you don't want them sort of all on top of each other so let's put plus unity engine dot random dot inside unit sphere multiplied by two just to give them a little bit of a distance then we can set up the components on them so manager dot set component data for that instance new translation value equals start pause And I'm also going to set up the rotation of them to match the camera. So manager.set component data instance new rotation value equals player.transform.rotation. If you've done any bullet shooting in that before, then the usual way of it is to instantiate your bullet at the position that you want it, facing in the direction that you want it, which is usually the direction of the gun or the player, and then on the 
bullets or on something else, you have the script that drives those bullets forward. And we're going to do the same thing here, but of course we're going to use a system instead to drive our bullets. Now the bullets are just going to go forward along their own z-axis, which means we want them facing in the right direction. And this rotation here is going to do that for us. Now I notice I made a typo up here. This should be bullet that we're instantiating. We're not instantiating from the game object. We want to instantiate from the actual bullet entity itself. And that's now given me an error. And that's now given me an error that it doesn't know what bullet is because it's using it inside of the uh, update rather than inside the start. So let's just create entity bullet outside of here as a global and just remove that one down there so that we can access it. All right, so that should have fixed my error down here. Now we can save it. Let's go back into Unity. The ECS manager, you'll need to click on that and give it your droplet so drag and drop that over to there and you'll also need your main camera down in the player okay so let's press play and see how we go when we shoot so if let's shoot there's our droplets now we don't have any move script on them remember so if they're moving it's because they've actually hit something and if i just turn around you'll be able to see them oh, there's some well, there's one. Yeah, so you can shoot them, but they're just going to continue to live inside of the system without moving forward. So let's write some code to move them forward, which is pretty easy. But first of all, you need to create a component on them to pick them up. So we've got this float data script here that we've put on our floating objects. Let's duplicate it and we will call it bullet data instead then open that up and rename it bullet data now you can leave the speed on it uh, save that go back into unity select the droplet and then drag and drop that bullet data onto it And you want to set the speed because we're not going to do that in the code, even though you could if you wanted to. So I want to make it 50 in this case so that they move along uh, pretty well. And then we need to create a system for it. So let's create a C sharp script and we will call it move bullet system. Double click on that. Now, uh, this is going to be very similar to the system that we previously wrote. So rather than retyping everything, go back to your float system and copy all of the code that's in there. Go back into your move bullet system and put that in there. And then make sure that you've changed float to move bullet system up there and then move bullet system there and then instead of float data you want to get the bullet data because you only want this script to work on your bullets okay now if you use the math that's in here and you change that down there to bullet speed then you're going to end up with floating bullets which is not what you want you want them to move forward so we're actually going to get rid of everything inside of the script that is moving the bullets and instead we're going to do this so we're going to go physics dot angular equals float 3.0 so this is going to force the angular rotation or the angular velocity of the physics on those particular bullets to zero to stop them floating and turning around in the wrong direction you want them to keep going in their forward direction that they start in now we want them to move linearly so physics dot linear and that's going to be plus equals we want delta time again so dt multiplied by our bullet data dot speed that we've set and then we're going to multiply this by math dot forward rotation 
dot value which is going to get hold of the forward vector because this is going to move it in world space so you want to get the forward vector in world space of the droplet move it forward at this particular speed all right so save that now let's go back into unity and we've got our speed that we already added to our droplet before so that when we press play now we'll be able to instantiate our droplets and they will go in a forward direction okay so there they go they will also hit and put out of alignment anything that they hit they will also live forever and ever and ever which is not what we want so just press stop they also don't collide at the moment so when we come back in the next video i'll show you how to limit the lifetime of entities so that you won't have them go on forever and ever and they can just exist for a couple of seconds in the scene thanks for watching Please support the development of more superb online learning content by subscribing. And as always, visit holistic3d.com to learn more about awesome games development books and tutorials.